Greetings, mystics. I'm here to bring you the new moon forecast for our new moon in Libra taking place on Sunday, September 25th at 4.54 p.m. United States Central Standard Time. And before I dig into the reading, I want to touch base quickly on something that I brought up in our last new moon reading, and that had to do with the moon phase itself in terms of astronomical data versus astrological data versus magical traditions. So let me clarify, I had mentioned that I needed a refresher on when the dark phase of the moon is. That is because, according to astronomy, the new moon actually occurs right in the middle of the dark phase of the moon. So the dark phase of the moon lasts between 1.5 and 3.5 days every month. And that depends on the ecliptic latitude. I'm not going to pretend to be an astronomer, um, but I am doing a little bit of research. So it is the ecliptic latitude that determines how long the moon phase is dark. And so traditionally in magic or in witchcraft, we consider the new moon to be when the moon is actually visible in the sky. But many astrologists go by the astronomical data. And so according to some astrology and all astronomy, the new moon actually occurs when the sky is dark. So that's what um, what I wanted to clarify. So when I'm talking to you about the dark phase of the moon, it's actually going to be on that new moon day. So uh, on Sunday, the 25th is actually going to be a dark moon day. We'll just keep that in mind as we move through these readings. And moving into this reading, the cards that I have pulled are the Three of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, the Five of Brooms, the Two of Cups, the Tower, the Five of Cups, the King of Cups, the Four of Swords, and the Hierophant card. So right away I'm noticing there are a lot of cups here. This makes sense for the sign of Libra. Uh, Libra very much being involved with relationships, being involved with home life, our relation to others, and our hearts. Libra is a caring side as well as being an earthy sign. So the relationships in our homes the relationships that are near and dear to us. Starting with our first three cards, these three cards are going to relate to that dark phase of the moon. So according to what we now know, this may be the 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th. That is the rough area in which the dark phase of the moon is going to occur. These three cards relate not only to that dark phase in the sky, which is related to divination and the underworld, a liminal space when the invisibles are closer to us, when the spirit world is closer to us, when we are more easily able to enter other worlds, to uh, astrally travel, to take our shamanic journeys, and so forth but it is also related to the dark phase within us. So this being a time where we are more easily able to access our own underworld and to bring forward things from our underworld that will allow us um, more clarity and more medicine and more integration as we move forward. So let me just apologize that you're going to hear Zola um, crying a lot. She's currently very mad at me because I made her come in from the patio. She basically wants to live there. So um, that's what's going on with all the meowing. 
Back to our cards, which are the Three of Cups, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Five of Brooms. So I'm seeing that there may be some strife in relationships around this time. And this dark phase that we're reading for, this is more related to our internal lives. So we may be feeling this tension in our relationships internally within ourselves. And it's going to look like a good time for socializing in terms of a lot of opportunities for spending quality time with other people and for enjoying that time. But through our interactions during that phase, we may not only be reminded of the past and how those relationships were built in the first place, but we may also be reminded of the aspects of the relationships that don't feel supportive to us, or we may be triggered in some way regarding past relationship experiences, which were definitely not uh, supportive of us. So this could be a triggering time in terms of things that we've gone through um, when we've put ourselves out there, when we've been vulnerable to others, when we've given of ourselves to others, and it hasn't worked out in our favor. This could be the kind of thing that is coming up. Now, let me say it will be really important then to recognize if you're being triggered by the past and not that let that cloud or interfere with what's going on in the present being sure that you're taking a moment, taking a deep breath and asking yourself, is this happening now? Or is this something I'm perceiving from the past? We don't want to live in the past. Sometimes when we are triggered, that is what, what we're doing, um, what we feel like. And then also in turn, what we end up projecting onto the present. So this is going to be a really important time to pay attention to that. Now, I did mention that you may be reminded of how your important relationships were built in the first place. Um, so that has its pros and cons, right? So you might be reminded of things that transpired in the past, um, both negative and positive. But I would encourage you then to focus on the positive, to remember how far you've come in those relationships, how much you've grown, how much other people have grown, how much you've grown together, and how hard you've worked on your relationships. It takes a lot of self-growth, a lot of dedication to stick with relationships and build strong, solid relationships. So this is a good time to focus on those positive aspects of growth and take a minute to appreciate it and take a minute to congratulate yourself and maybe even do some journaling or some meditating for yourself about how far you've personally come in relationships, how much progress you've made, what your past relationships look like um, in 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 comparison to what your present relationships look like and what kind of work you've had to do in order to get there. Moving forward to our next three cards. Our next three cards are the Two of Cups, the Tower card, and the Five of Cups. So again, lots of cups. Um, and these cards relate to the transitional phase. And what I'm talking about here is in terms of what's happening with the moon in the sky. So when the moon is starting to come out of the dark phase and starting to be visible, um, growing into that beautiful new moon that we recognize. So this is going to be happening through the dates of 26th, 27th, 28th, around there. So these cards relate to how we transition through um, these phases internally and externally. So with the Two of Cups, I do see us getting closer again in our relationships, but I also see with the Tower card here and the Five of Cups, those issues from the past still threatening to prevent us from really being focused on what we have today in front of us, the beautiful, wonderful, 
opportunities that we have in front of us to connect with other people, um, threatening to prevent us from seeing and really feeling and being within the love that we have present for us today. I also see this tower card um, indicating that there could be some things shaking up our relationships. There could be some tumultuous energy there. So again, it looks like this uh, phase of really um, the potential to be triggered from the past and the potential to allow that to um, affect the future, this could linger throughout the days mentioned. Now, I'm also recognizing that this can be indicative of cycles repeating themselves. So we might find that in our current relationships, we are experiencing things that we have experienced before. And that could be within us and that could be within others or it could be within the relationship itself. Uh, anyone who has experienced an intense relationship can will probably agree with me that a relationship takes on a kind of an energy of itself when two people um, are together, that is uh, a different kind of entity almost. The relationship is a thing in and of itself to be cared for um, and the individuals are still individuals. So what is happening in the relationship might be repetitive. You might find some things repeating there that have happened in the past and it might really shake up your perceptions. It might shake up um, what you believe about the relationship, what you believe about yourself, and what you believe about the other people. So just pay attention. Um, if there are cycles that need to be broken, that's a great thing to recognize. And recognizing it means that you have the power to break it. Now, if you find that you are focusing too much on the loss and not enough on what you have available to you, then we need to go back to that guidance present in the Nine of Pentacles and think about how far we've come. We could not have come so far without learning so many tools, without gaining so much wisdom, without learning so many skills, without so much personal growth. So that is evidence that we have what we need in, over, in order to overcome current challenges in order to break current cycles. So recognize that it's a positive thing if you notice that you need to break cycles. Noticing it is a positive thing and you do have the skills to do so. And throughout this, once again, also continue to be reminded of the love that you have in front of you now, with you now, of the deep connections and the loving and supportive people that you have with you now. Moving on to the last three cards. This is the King of Cups. This is the Four of Swords and the Hierophant. So with these three cards, I'm talking about the first time that the moon can be seen following the new moon. So in other words, the first time that the moon is a crescent in the sky after it is dark. So we already now know that it will be dark on the 25th and that will be right in the middle of the dark phase. So then it's going to be appearing in the sky somewhere between the 27th, 28th, 29th, right? I might be extending these phases a little bit. They do tend to go in threes, but they also tend to vary, um, just like what we saw with how long the moon is actually dark. So these three cards are in conjunction with that newly illuminated moon, that new crescent of fresh life, new beginnings, a fresh start visible to us in the sky, and not only symbolic of that moon, but ushered in through the energy of that moon. And we're looking at the King of Cups, so a refreshing um, air of love, replenishing our hearts, um, feeling more hopeful, feeling a bit more mastered over our emotions, but also risking the chance of being a little bit too guarded, of wanting to protect ourselves, wanting to protect our vulnerability. So during this time, it's going to be important to resist 
the urge to put up strong barriers in order to feel as if you are mastering your emotions because we do see with the four of swords that there's going to still be some lingering upset some lingering sadness some lingering challenges some lingering uh, challenging emotions happening underneath the surface maybe feeling mentally and emotionally exhausted from all that has transpired um so the urge might be to hide that from others the urge might be to um appear to be a master of your emotions and we all know but sometimes we need a reminder that a true master of emotions is somebody who is not afraid to be vulnerable, somebody who's not afraid to tell the truth and to talk about how they feel. That doesn't mean that you have to put yourself out there in situations where it may not be safe or you may not feel comfortable, but it does mean that you don't have to lie or hide things and that you get to choose when and how you talk about it, but you never have to lie or hide things or keep it a secret. We know that there is great strength, great courage, and great freedom in being vulnerable and being honest about our feelings and our emotional experiences. And if you've ever been through serious loss, which most people have, and you put yourself out there, then you know the experience of freedom that I'm talking about. You know how liberating it can be to just share your pain with others. And by sharing your pain with others, I don't mean non-consensually dumping your emotions on others. I just mean being honest about your feelings and your experiences. Incredibly liberating. So the Hierophant is here as well, which also tells me that we're leaning towards um, some outward expression of strength at this time and some desire for control. Um, but the positive side of the Hierophant and the positive side of all of this is that we may be able to alchemize our experience. So in other words, turn it into medicine. Turn it into medicine that's going to help ourselves. Turn it into medicine that's going to help others. And of course, we cannot do that unless we share it. So um, the Hierophant can also be a wonderful teacher and it can be an unlikely teacher. It can be a surprising teacher. So there is an experience here that can be a surprising and unlikely teacher for us and that can really help us to gain this heart-centered strength that we need and help us to transform our experience into something that we can use for good. And that means used for good for ourselves as well as used for good for others. So in short, this new moon is going to be a revelatory time for our relationships and our relationship patterns. We're going to be able to recognize our own growth as well as link the past to the present in our relationship patterns and in our emotional patterns. It may be a time where we change our ideas, change our patterns, and change our perceptions and beliefs. And it's going to be a great time to break free from unwanted cycles and truly become a master of our emotions through vulnerability. Many blessings.